Hi, I'm Lindsay Galloway, and I am a screenwriter, and I like to write everything from historical period pieces to female-driven dramas to uh, sci-fi-esque comedies, uh, so I'm a little bit of a mix, but my themes are always about, usually about um, friendship and workplace dynamics and class dynamics. Oh, uh, I just started watching Atlanta. I'm behind the game, but it's excellent. And uh, Abbott Elementary, of course. Um, uh, like everyone, really enjoyed the last season of White Lotus season two. <laughs> it's really fun. And uh, really looking forward to the new succession uh, season coming out and trying to think if there's anything else um, that's in the ether. But uh I just watched, I just finished watching the movie um, Rosalind. So that was really fun, the Shakespeare reinterpretation. So I enjoyed that one a lot. But yeah, kind of a diverse, uh, diverse taste um, yeah. across different genres. And Sundance movies. And Sundance uh, movies, yes, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I'm very excited about uh, Sarah Polly. I think she has that new movie, um, Women Talking. Um, and I believe she directed the wrote and directed the screenplay for Alias Grace, which is um, a historical period piece um, about a, a Canadian woman who was a uh, accused of murder uh, as a maid. And so it was a really interesting. The f I did my thesis on the book. And so uh, when I watched the miniseries, I was like, no one could adapt that. Like, no one could possibly adapt this book and do justice to it. But I feel like she did. So I remember looking her up and being like, this is the career, like, career that I want to uh, be able to emulate, to be able to have my own vision, but also be able to translate historical fiction books I love and to be able to do that. So definitely her. I think I would just uh, definitely uh, express my appreciation for for the work she did on Alias Grace, I just thought that was such a cool, uh, she did such a good job with that and congratulate her on the success of her latest, the latest feature, um, Women Talking. I'm so excited to see that. And uh, and yeah, just probably ask her advice for someone trying to to break into the industry and uh, and get her perspective on, on what it's like being a writer and director and having a hopefully long career in, in the industry. Yeah, a hundred percent. I was always, uh, always writing, uh, coloring books and coming up with stories and, uh, ghost cat, I think was my first published book that I made out of, <laughs> out of a little paper and colored pencils. So, um, so yeah, I was always, uh, loved literature, loved Shakespeare. Um, of course, one of my, my muses and, uh, uh, end up being an English major uh, in college and a women and gender studies dual major. So, um, yeah, it was always been lo a lover of words and uh, in high school started to write um, to do journalism, actually. So I got started in, in journalism and uh, continued that as my like first writing career, if you will. Ooh, that was my 2020 adventure. <laughs> so, yeah, so really relatively re recently. So I had... Um, uh, worked on a different, a couple different novel ideas, and uh, the, for the Last Queen's Painter was originally envisioned as a novel. Uh, and then in 2020, when the pandemic hit, I decided to take a screenplay class, and <laughs> it just flowed off the page when it when it was screenwriting. It was so clear to me that that was the genre that I was supposed to be working in. Um, that's how it felt. So it was fun to feel that way, be a part of a screenwriting community it's just engaging and fun and great feedback and really love the the crew that I met in in screenwriting so yeah relatively recently but even though I've been a writer and fiction writer for a long time it's that's a great question I what well, was helpful because I had come across save the cat during um during when I was novel writing structure, I was always trying to learn structure and so that helped um that really helped me understand at least the the beats that a screenplay needed and the the story plot points that we needed to tell. So that was helpful. Um, some of the challenges, uh, I think, were scene work, just always like getting kind of in and out, making sure every scene has a conflict, making sure every uh, everything has an arc, the little mini arcs that happen throughout a screenplay. So just really understanding the form and how it would work differently than a novel or short story uh, was probably the biggest challenge, but uh, in a fun way, I enjoyed the challenge. 
Oh, yeah, of course. I was talking to, to Ria about this, that uh, having a sense of curiosity, I think, is always really important because you want to understand people's story. And I think it's no different when you're interviewing a subject from when you're interviewing uh a character in your <laughs> in your novel and really understanding what are their motivations what do they want what are they uh what do they fear what are their uh, biggest motivations so just understanding that as a journalist and talking to people really gave me i think the skill set to understand the complexity of characters and making them feel human and not so one dimensional yeah i think for me having a community was so important um i am i'm like the classic kind of half extrovert, half, half introvert. So I really need the community and need the extra, like the people around me to be able to do my best work in my opinion, which is another reason screenwriting always appealed to me. So it was helpful to me um, to have like, we did Zoom writing groups, uh, shout out Kara and Pam. So we uh, <laughs> just Tuesday and Thursdays always had a hour and a half. We would do two writing sprints and like, that's how I finished my screenplay. Just like showing up, you can like, like you said, showing up, you do the work. It doesn't have to be like, you don't have to punish yourself, like sit in front of the computer eight hours a day, just like make that commitment to yourself to be like, I'm going to show up during these times. And even if it's like I get one sentence, but I showed up like that, it, it, that keeps you going. And then it, it's so cliche, but like you keep showing up and by the end you have a finished screenplay. So that's, that's how it works. So it's been fun. I loved uh, coming across the ISA primarily through the contests and being able to um, just have a wide range of contests that were always appealing to me, like table, the table reader screenplay competition. I always thought that would be the coolest thing um, to have your script read aloud. Uh, in high school, I did acting, which is part of the reason I also like um, the also like screen screenplay. So um, I just love hearing the words spoke out loud. So I remember that was one of the first contests that I was like, I'm going to enter this. Um, and uh, and then the genre, I think, ones as well, because um, since I write in historical, having a place where historical could be looked at as its own. Uh, area of focus was interesting. And then, yeah, I really enjoyed the site. I know the redesign just came out and I've really enjoyed playing around with that and being able to showcase your work in a bunch of different ways. It's not just like upload your script. I really like that you can put a soundtrack <laughs> against the <laughs> against your movie. Um, I like that you can connect with other writers. Um, I really like even the open call assignments. Uh, I reached out to a screenwriter. So, and we're potentially working on something together uh, from one of those. So it's just been a great resource um, throughout my uh, early career and trying to find the right opportunities and networks and uh, inf information about the industry, basically. Oh, it's been so much fun. Like, it's so exciting. You can feel the energy in the air of everyone being back in person at Sundance. Everyone's really excited to be here, be together, meet new people. Uh, I love being around creative people that are always have something interesting going on. Uh, it's, it's been a blast and really looking forward to uh, meeting the actors in person. We've done some online rehearsals, but uh, it'll be fun to get to meet them. And it's been fun seeing films like it's been a long time since I've been in a theater with other people watching and really having that experience as a collective is is really cool and something that I've definitely missed. Um, so that's been fun. I think I think going back to um, you don't, it's not, I think people get discouraged because a lot of writing things like, well, you have to write every day or you have to s sit at the computer eight hours a day, but it's really about just the, whatever time commitment you make with yourself and showing up, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have days where the scenes flow and the scene days when the scenes are like not coming at all. And it's just is the, I think the showing up, uh, is what matters. And then also I'm a big fan of rewriting and revision and getting the draft out and then honing it in. Um, once you've got your outline, cause it's a lot easier to go back. I've found as a writer to go back and really hone your different scenes, characters, deepen it just like a painting and really be able to layer in the different complexities with the characters and different, uh, angles and themes and motivations. So a big fan of rewriting. <laughs> yeah, no, I would love, I would love to have a movie made someday. I would love to, uh, attend the, like, the Oscars was always a dream since I was a kid. So having that a little bit closer in reach is pretty <laughs> exciting. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, for everyone to be able to express their creative 
side and be able to have the opportunities that I've had to um, really get in touch with whatever it is, because I think everyone's a creative being at the end of the day. So being able to have the the tools, the resources, the community to really express those gifts, I think would be a, a great humanity wish for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like when I got the call from, I, from ISA, like it was like, I'm getting goosebumps now, just even <laughs> like recalling it because yeah, it was one of those things that stuff comes full, full circle because I had done a different different careers uh throughout my uh 20s and early 30s and then all of a sudden realizing like oh this is what I always wanted to have a creative career I always um had these creative ambitions and getting one step closer where people are engaging with my work and reading the work and connecting with it and just um seeing that vision and building on it together and having that community around it has been amazing. So it's really cool to, uh, to your point, looking back and, and remembering how it felt when I was a kid, what was like my ambitions and desires as a kid and coming back and being like, oh, I'm, it's a lot closer now. Like it feels like it within reach. And uh, it's a really, really cool feeling. That's a good one. Um, uh, there are two that I can think of. Um, one one is because I'm like guilty uh, guilty about it. It's like the da like dangling modifiers. I think so having like if you have a phrase and then it do, but it's not describing the thing that comes right after. I'm super guilty of it, so I notice it all the time because I do it all the time. Um, so that's that's definitely one. And then um, hyphens. I had a journalism teacher that just like just beat hyphens to death. So I like understand hyphens really well too, but now I'm never I'm like, that's the hyphens in the wrong spot. This is the wrong spot. So uh, they're silly ones, but all the same. Oh, like the word that just came to mind was like lively. Like, um, so I just like L's as a, as a Lindsay. So any L word I'm a fan of. And, uh, and I like the, the, uh, musicality of language always. So I like the lilt a little bit of the, Lively. So um, and that's what I hope my words are always. So I'm going to go with that.